Hi, Hugh. Okay. Um, so I guess the idea was for me to um, uh, to talk about you and Sarah, and um, they are teaching the um, uh, the yoga program with Twim, which is something actually that we used to talk about in Seattle with some people uh, that were working with yoga and they were discovering that if you are using the twin steps in conjunction with yoga you can often go into a deeper position sometimes as much as three or four inches deeper into a position when you're doing a series in yoga and i think you and sarah have figured this out and worked together with this so i'm really excited to see this today and um, there's a little more here. Let's see Ooh, what happened. Well, I know you told me about this and I'm trying to find where it is. Ooh. Well, I didn't go back far enough. Wait just a second. Mm. Oh, I, well, no, this is where it is. It's under Don McGinn Basie. Anyway, they're going to tell us all about this program they have with yoga. And I have talked some to you before about this. It's a very special program. And what we are trying to do is to help to raise some money for Bunty's traveling expenses. And uh, I don't know if you all know it or not, but he has basically got a plan and in, in, we have a ticket for him to go back to the United States, but there is a little bit of concern about how to get him to where he can get on the plane and how that will work. And so day to day, I get reports from Mumbai and the seriousness of the situation. And um, I was telling some Americans this morning, they are actually really lucky with everything that's going on there. I know there are problems, but the way that they were able to handle the COVID is much better equipped in some ways than what's happening here. Because uh, in Mumbai, for instance, I was told last week they were very close to running out of beds. And in India, the, the, it's not as easy for them to just simply uh, have a hospital ship show up with thousands of beds and to have everything, you know, happen in the affluent, as did in an affluent country. And also, I don't think people realize in the United States there were 340 million people altogether. But when you are talking about this happening in India, I can't get my head around 1.43 billion people. That's, it's a big number and I can do six zeros with millions, but it's hard for me to fathom how small the United States population is in relationship to this and the vast difference in income and structure. And I've been around India visiting. Uh, when I tried to write it, I realized, you know, I've visited people in shacks in the agricultural community and then in mud huts and in tents and then in little villages that are made out of bamboo in Tripura, and um, then going to towns and cities that are very tiny. And sure. we don't have any idea in the West about this. We don't understand. So it's a really big okay. deal what this is here. Okay, yeah. well, I think uh, we can allow uh, you to start now. Uh, it is seven. And so seven. we're kind of starting, but I, it's a real interesting thing because now I can you tell me the date that you sent that to me because for some reason I can't put my finger on it. Um, okay, I, I'll send it to you uh, now. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> okay. I thought I had it right on my fingertips and it's like it just went away. Okay. Oh, that's good to do it that way. That's very nice. Okay. Only it won't turn. I got that part, so that's all right. Um, so this is this meeting is about 
being introduced to the form of yoga that you, Poulton, and Sarah Hayden uh, have put together. And um, you, Poulton, is, you is basically a very long-term student of Bhante Vimala Ramsey. I remember you in the very beginning. <laughs> it was a long time ago at Damasuka, and he's practiced yoga and mindfulness for over 40 years and has taught for the last 25 years, and his work is referenced in uh, Mark Williams' best-selling book, Mindfulness, Finding Peace in a Frantic World, and he's done a really great job. He is joined uh, by his wife, Sarah Hayden, who is also a student of Bhante's and has been teaching uh, Sukita Yoga. Uh, with you for the last six years. And you is a senior yoga teacher with the Yoga Alliance in the UK. So they're growing and getting a lot of people to come into this. And the unique style of Sukita um, is teaching, has won admiration internationally for its direct and relevant self-referential approach. And this is a weaving of yoga you together with the steps that I think are used in the right effort yeah and Absolutely. so you you have the relaxed step involved with this and you have the smile as you're doing this so I'm going to turn this over to you I'm really happy to be here I'm happy to uh, be able to be with you and we're hoping to um, to uh, this was their suggestion to try to help to raise uh, money to help with the with the expenses for Bhante to go back to the United States, where he has uh, got a couple of retreats to do in the coming months there. So we're all excited about this. <coughs> Hi, you. How are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, thank you. So okay. uh, uh -huh. thank you very much, uh, Sister Kima and uh, Bhante Dhamma Kabesi for uh, the introduction. And we're really delighted to this opportunity to share what we teach with you. Um, we have a, a big screen up so we can see people, but most of you have got your video off. So um, that might be because you're saving bandwidth, um, but it does mean that we can't interact a, a little bit with you. So if you're happy to have the uh, video on, then please, please do that. Okay, good. Um, now, um, we'll be taking you through a number of uh, sort of movements, uh, warm-ups and yoga movements. Um, if you've got any injuries or any conditions in your body that you feel are uh, in any way restrictive or you want to avoid uh, further injury or whatever you're dealing with, then just listen to your body. You know, don't uh, just take what we say to do and don't think uh, or listen to your body. Listen to your body, don't push into tension, certainly don't push into pain. Uh, I think, or I hope, after an hour together, you'll appreciate that what we're doing here is really developing a, a style of yoga, which is uh, taking all of the tension out of the practice. Uh, um, so we're looking for a style of yoga which is free, open, released, soft, very light. And the consequence of that is that it becomes very sensitive to what's going on in our mind. And so our body becomes a reflection of our mental states. Uh, and that's really, really helpful. And it's particularly helpful when we take this practice off the mat into daily life, because we're continuing to move in daily life. And it's this integration of the practice into body movement, which is the thing I think, which is the most interesting and exciting thing about this practice, because we get this early warning system through our body about what's happening with our mind at times, particularly in daily life, where we may not see those conscious movements. So it's a tuning in to what our, the language of our body uh, and integrating the teaching of TWIM into this practice so that it's like, if you like, an extension of your sitting practice in movement, but we also have the benefit of uh, a movement practice for keeping the body healthy, fit, supple and able to sustain longer periods of meditation as we require without a sense of strain and discomfort. Um, so to start this, I would like to just hand over to Sarah because Sarah came to this before she came to Bhante's teaching. Um, and so she came in from the yoga side um, and you know her description of that 
and then subsequently coming into to Bantha's teaching, I think it's very helpful. So Sarah, perhaps you'd like to say a few words. Okay, so one of the uh, aspects that I found really helpful beginning um, a movement practice with yoga is it helped me reconnect with my body initially. There were whole aspects of my embodied self, if you like, that I was very disconnected with. And so there was a gradual um, improvement in my sense of not just physical well-being, but a, uh, I think someone might have a uh, just, just place yourself on mute. On mute. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, so the, the yoga that I began uh, really helped me develop a kinder relationship with my physical home. I think that's the first step. And the disconnection that I had was really quite extreme. And the tension that I found was really quite uh, gross. And then things began to shift and evolve so that I began to be aware of more of the mental connections in the physical body and the subtle tensions that were still in my body and still in my mind. And so it's become a process of cleaning and refining the way everything knits together. And like you say, this comes right out into your, your daily life uh, because we're always in this physical home. It's moving with us all of the time, all our relationships, all our interactions. And sometimes, certainly in my case, I don't have the skill to catch that jump that I do into unskillful response. But the listening, and I don't always have the skill to do it through my body, but the listening the yoga has given me, sometimes I'm able to feel the sense of heat that's coming around a bit of anger that's going to break through. Not always. Um, it gives you an embodied roadmap about how to catch the movements of your mind. So it's like, like he says, it's your early, early radar warning system for things kicking off. So that's very good. Um, but the other, the other aspect about it, which I think really, really came home to me when I, I started um, a greater depth of meditation with Sister Kima and then Banti on retreat, is this understanding of more subtle awareness and an experience of greater space in the mind and an experience of balance in the mind. And those are some of the qualities that I've started to feel through the physical yoga practice, but a refining from it being gross physical form moving into something that was starting to feel much lighter, much more in balance, much more fluid, much more spacious similar qualities, not the same, but similar to what the meditation experience can, um, can create. So it's a really interesting, it's not just parallel, it's a really interesting synthesis. And from, from the journey that I took through the physical body into something more energetic and then mental, it's like the whole, the whole thing, the whole teaching is confirmed, whichever way you look at it. And so the expansion, just purely in terms of a physical movement practice, there are moments when your body disappears. It's extraordinary. And, um, and you know, some, some of the most dramatic moments, and we're not definitely not doing these with you today, but something you and I sometimes call a handstand mind. When you are really, really able to refine your awareness, simply to the touch of your hands and simply to an internal energetic support using the twin relax release mind, your body disappears. And so you have an embodied outward presentation, a floating handstand, and then boom, you come back in and down your legs come. And it's really extraordinary because you can't say that you controlled or owned that movement. Yet, something was going, something happened, something, and it's a wow moment in, in the yoga. 
So that's just a, I guess, a, an example of how, um, how our refining awareness changes experience. It's completely radical and it's completely transformat transformatory. And the, 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 the other thing that's coming, that's coming through I want to mention is around how, um, how it's such a healing practice. And, you know, I am, I, yeah, I really, really am very grateful for this, um, this path that's enabled me to start to heal aspects of myself, um, which have been very out of balance. And what, what, one thing actually I can, I can tell you about, which is um, it's very extraordinary how tension seems to um, consolidate and become more and more dense in the body until it's like running its own program. So this, this has been something I've had a lot of in, a, in, a, in my right hip. And the physicality of that has been very intense over a period of years. Um, working with the loving kindness, using what we, um, something he's gonna to talk to you more about in a minute, but our awareness of an inner landscape and an energetic support has enabled me to have a different relationship with something quite acute. And what I've experienced through that is changing properties in the body. So it hasn't remained as a confirmed, solid, concrete lump. There's been uh, shifts and evolutions where, um, you can see my hands are moving, there's been greater fluidity, moments of space, but then still the lovers remain until gradually things have eased and opened out. And that's required a real mental balance to go through, the, through this process. And that, that's something that um, TWIM is completely, into, it's completely integrated in this process. Without the mental balance, the equilibrium, and the sense of loving kindness, but not just that, the, the space that you can create around something intense that's in, held in the physical body, it will feel, yeah, you need, you need that to be able to go through the, through the process. So healing, uh, physically strengthening and cleaning, confirm, confirmatory of a whole teaching approach, uh, really exciting that you can bring this into your daily life, that your body is moving around with you, you've got this early warning system, you can start to use it in your interactions with other people. And then I think the, the other aspect is what we wanted to particularly teach you today is how you use it for sitting. Um, it's nice to be able to move in your body, to be, uh, have a healthy self-esteem, I don't mean a, a vain practice, um, but something where you're, you're taking care. All of this is really good. But sitting is also something where we're, we need our body to be static. Um, but we don't want it to be static and welded and stuck and contained and controlled. We want it to be effortly expansive, inwardly supportive, so that a meditation can flow and there's a, uh, a sense of grounded support. So you've got a nice, nice foundation. And I like to meditate um, by coming in through the body so that I'm not, in a, I'm not in a hurry for my meditation. I'm relaxing into my sit bones. I'm aware of, I'm aware of my sense of being human in a physical body that I've got this connection with my natural surroundings, that I feel, yeah, the sit bones can drop, tension can release, I'm all right. I'm gonna do a loving kindness meditation. Here I am in my body, my shoulders can relax, my spine can lengthen up, hmm, this is good. And then I gradually withdraw my senses. And I like to do it through a bit of movement, a bit of spiraling, so I'm encouraging my spine. I think I might be in you might be wanting to take over at this point, but it's a gradual 
moving into stillness so that I'm gradually coming out of the external world into my internal world. And this feels very nurturing and, and, and natural. And I think this is what's, um, yeah, a lovely reflection on the practice as a whole, whether you look, look at it as a pure movement practice or a pure meditation practice, or you make no distinction between the two. This is about a, a natural inquiry. It's returning to a natural state of being, really present, really connected, and, and growing what's uh, sustainable within us, fortifying, um, really, um, yeah, really kind-hearted. These are, these are, these are, this is a good place to be. So I've done a lot of talking there, probably more than I intended. Um, I think it would be good to, do you want to say a little bit more about um, yeah. energetic support? Because this is very important in terms of how Hugh has brought these amazing principles of, of TWIM and the Buddha's teaching with yogic principles together. So I'm going to let him take over. Okay. Thank you. So one, one of the key things around Bhante's teaching is this important relationship we need to have with tension. And we really need to allow that tension to come out of the mind, come out of the body. But our traditional way of using our body is to use tension for support, to hold ourselves up. And one of the things that yoga can teach us is that there's another way of working with our body, another way of working with our mind, which allows us to have support without this tension. And this is connecting through to the energetic body. And if you've been on a retreat with uh, Sister Kima, um, Sister Kima will sometimes describe this energy going up the spine and down and round as part of, uh, uh, as part of her description around how to sit and how to, to work with the meditation. And this is also an important part. If we can cultivate this sense of energetic support within us, then we can let the rest of the physical body relax. And with it, we can keep the mind spacious and open. And then what we have is a body which is energetically supported. And then we can move from this energetic center, which then creates the movement in our body. And we can move without there being a sense of tension. So we get this sense of lightness, softness. We get this release. You know, if you listen to Sister Kima's uh, introduction to the talk uh, this week, she was talking about how as we go through the root pajamas, there's this progressive release of tension and the body starts to disappear. And that's the experience in the yoga. The, you know, when you work energetically in the yoga, the things that you feel are the contact, fasa, contact with the floor, this is our foundation, contact through the breath, contact through generating this energetic uh, presence. And that's about it. So that the body moves and flows without this sense of being my body, without it being um, a, a, a description of what I'm doing. And when we really connect to this energetic movement, it's like, wow, how did the body move? Who's doing this? Rather than owning the shape and the form and all the things that we're doing. So rather than cultivating a, um, an attachment to what our body is doing. Mm -hmm. When we work through the energetic body, we actually cultivate a detachment from the physical body because that's what allows it to flow. And when we see it flowing, then we realize that actually we don't want to have this attachment to the physical body because the body becomes heavy and stiff and tight and awkward and, and exhausting. And when we work energetically, it's the opposite of so this is, I just want to interject here, this is where the work is. It's not creating the outward shape. It's in the, it's in the six R's, basically. It's what you're catching as you're moving, the movements of mind, but your body gives you a feedback because it goes tense when you've come out of listening, when you've come out of balance. And then that's reflected in the body feeling denser, and uh, the transparency disappears. So it's very, very dynamic and, and interesting. 
Yeah. And so, first of all, we're just going to introduce this energetic core, this energetic uh, presence in the body. And for men, this is a, uh, an awareness in the perineum in the body. So the right down at the base of the spine, in front of the spine, muscle group there, this is where the, the energetic center is for men. And for women, it's a little bit further up the body, behind, just below the navel, a little bit deeper in the body, and being aware here. It's not a holding, it's not a gripping, it's a soft awareness. And when we allow that soft awareness to be there, we can begin to relax the body and it doesn't collapse. So I'm going to ask Sarah to take you through a few warm-up movements uh, to begin to cultivate an experience of this. And then I'll come in and do some, some standing work with you and, and see how we go. Okay, okay so I, um, I, as I can't see you all, I don't know how you're set up, if you're on chairs or if you're sitting down. Um, so I'll, do, I'll, I'll stay on the floor, but do what if this is appropriate for you. And you can be kneeling like me, or you can have your legs out, or obviously stay sitting on your chair. My body's just opened up to be able to sit cross-legged. I think I started yoga looking like this, and I'll show you from the side like this, really, really concave spine and rounded shoulders. So don't worry, whatever, whatever you find is, is, part of, is part of the process of the exploration. So we're gonna start by having a really nice jiggle. And I also like to teach children and they love the jiggling and wriggling. So we'll all be children for a moment. Just have a little wriggle and shuffle around on your sit bones. And then as you breathe out, let your body really relax down. You want to feel these sit bones dropping. And a Tai Chi class actually I joined recently, they talked about letting yourself feel as though you're sinking into a warm bath. It's that kind of relaxing and releasing you want to feel. Okay, then we're going to breathe in and follow our center forward. So you feel your whole spine open up, up to the crown of your head, and then breathe out, lightly draw your center back in. We're going to create a gentle rocking through the body, breathing in and out. And you can let your neck and head move on the top. So it's much more in the way you and I teach that your body follows the movement. You're not trying to control things to happen. You're allowing things to take their natural course. Now, you'll often see me teaching with my eyes closed. So you can soften your gaze or totally close your eyes now, breathing in and out. Start to feel the natural length of your body, the sense of widening across your pelvis, across your heart, your ribs expanding. And feel the sense of wide dimension of your breath. Moving all the way up and down the length of your spine, down to your fingers, down to your toes. You're developing an awareness of greater spaciousness. And then back to a neutral spine. I'm going to circle here. You see, you've got my, I've got my hands on my, on my uh, just above my knees. And then back round in the other direction. So I like to think of this as a really cleaning and sweeping out movement. So we're looking after our home now. Letting our neck and head release, inviting any gross level tension to drain and drop out of our bodies. Breathing in and out. Keep your awareness in your sit bones. You need to stay rooted down into the ground. As you begin to feel a sense of fluidity through your joints, through your muscles, staying with the awareness of your breath and relaxing inside your mind. You might want to lift the corners of your eyes, the corners of your mouth, and tune you into the sense of smiling. And then gradually draw these circles closer and closer in. And then see that movement pattern in your body up to the crown of your head and just follow it with your neck and head over to one side. 
And then inhale back to center, circle. See that spiral all the way high and relax your neck and head to the other side. And then we're going to draw into our spine and let our neck and release, head release down and away. Breathing in and out. So you're starting to see how a neck roll that you might think would only be moving the neck and the head. Actually, when you listen more subtly, there's a movement that comes from much deeper in your body. In fact, the whole of your torso is involved. And if you're holding on, your shoulders aren't going to release, your ribs aren't going to move. In fact, your body's going to be really tense. So allow everything to flow together. And then we're going to end up with the neck and head dropping down low, and then expand away from the spine. Nice big breath in, let the neck and head drop down. Exhale, draw your center in. Let your spine release. Breathing in and out. And again, listen for that sense of opening. And then relax. Breathing in and out. Now I like to also bring to mind with my breath this sense of invigoration in the body. You take a new breath in, new life, your body opens. As you breathe out, you're relaxing, inviting the tension to drop. So smile on the inhale and smile on the exhale, relax. Breathing in and out. Now we're going to roll up into our shoulders. So this is another part of the body that we're often holding on in, particularly if you do any work with computers. So it's nice to feel that sense of rotation through the shoulders. And then we're going to reverse the direction. And again, to allow the movement to come from low down in your body, up high, exhale, breathing in and out. So you want to feel the ribs involved, the heart. Okay, good. And then let the shoulders drop. Shake everything out again. Relax, release all the necessary tension. Let it drop down into the ground and then interlock your hands together. Now we're going to expand away from our spine. Follow that length all the way up through your fingers. Exhale, widen and then draw into your spine. And then once more, feel your sit bones. Follow that length. Be light through your fingers. Exhale, widen and draw back in. So here we're listening. For a sense of inner structure, it's also guiding us into this experience of space. Usually, our awareness tends to be focused on the externals. But here we want to feel an embodied awareness of grounded, being grounded, fluid, and light, all at the same time. Exhale, one more like this. And then leave your arms wide and then draw your center lightly into your spine. Let the fingertips drop, breathing in and out. Softly smile and allow the center to create this support. So here we're really accessing, invigorating that sense of space between the shoulders. Allowing our heart to have its place. Exhale. Now, if we're too outwardly focused, we'll be doing this movement, holding the shoulders up. And we're looking for something that's more intuitive. And this is what the energetic support is that Hugh was talking about earlier, a lengthening up the front of the spine being aware of this sense of width internally, exhale, okay, and then release, recircle, feel that fluidity in your shoulders, softly smile, okay, so now we're going to work with a twist, 
Remembering what we did with the neck and the head, it's a movement you follow from your center. As you breathe in, expand up your torso. Sometimes I like to work with my own hands to feel the space in the ribs. And then exhale, you're gonna twist from your center and let your upper body follow the movement. And then inhale back and exhale, release to the other side. And then breathing in back to center, ease out. We're gonna do a forward bend, lengthen as you breathe in. Exhale, draw your center in as you breathe out, relax your body forward, circle here. So this you can also do on a chair. So you need to learn to fine tune your awareness to see either when your mind's wandered off somewhere else or that there are aspects within your body that you're enjoying or aspects that you're feeling pretty aversive to. <laughs> Inhale, expand away, roll up through your shoulders. If you're sitting down like me, or actually you can find the back of a chair, bring the fingertips behind and now expand away from your spine, let your neck and head drop back. Now only if you're on the ground it feels appropriate, you can keep expanding and let your body rise up. Exhale, lower, and then drawing in. Now you have to be on the ground for this because I'm going to show you a cat cow. So if you're on a chair, you can just watch this. Knees underneath your hips, wrists underneath your shoulders. Now let your abdomen sink. So our practice is not about an overtoning or an over-controlling. So you're allowed a soft abdomen. Then you're going to expand to the side, let the hips follow. Breathing in and out. Softly smile. So this movement is really nice for freeing up your spine. And obviously when you go to sit for extended periods of meditation, you want a spine that's able to feel released and relaxed. So try taking a full circle up and over. Relax your elbows. Be curious. Where are your patterns of holding? So it's really interesting that movement can tune us into strange places our body's holding on. We're inviting this circular movement. But sometimes you find a calf's gone tight, <laughs> one shoulder is unevenly tense. What's going on? We didn't ask it to tense up, but yet it's done so all the same. And this is where you soften, smile, relax around the tension inside your head, relax around the tension in your body. And then reconnect with this inner support and move from here. So you can take a few figures of eight. So I like to figure of eight moving up the body, down towards the sit bones, one way, and then also horizontally side to side. Remember to breathe, nice long deep breaths, change direction, and also working on the vertical, so looping up to the sky and down to the ground. And these movements really start to show you where there's not a sense of release, what's holding on. Okay, and then back to a neutral spine. So now we're gonna play with feeling the left leg on the ground and take the weight out of the right. Now we're gonna draw our center in and let the leg come in. And then I want you to feel a sense of expansion through the leg all the way into the toes. So it's a bit like if you pour out of a jug of water and you fill up a glass and then expand up the front of your body out through your fingers. And then exhale lower and swap sides to join the left leg in and then expand away. And then exhale. Okay, we're going to look a little bit more at our shoulders now. So, looking at our shoulders through our centre. So, in fact, the shoulders can down tools. Here, you're going to have an awareness of your centre, drawing to the side and releasing your right shoulder underneath. And then breathing in, come back and breathing out. And then, you can repeat this quite slowly. 
I'm going to demonstrate what it means to move energetically. You can see right up, keeping your mind really relaxed, and your body completely soft, and then back to centre. And so that's an example of working not with strength, I'm not pulling my shoulders through, relaxed mind, energetic movement, and everything's in balance, and I'm not even out of breath. So then bring the knees together. We're going to take the weight out of one side. And then we're going to follow our center to the side and let the knee come high. Exhale. Breathing in, other side, and out. So this is to help you find freedom in your hips. Because if you're sitting for a long time, the legs straight out in front, the hips will be quite closed. So this is to help your body find a sense of balance through the hip joints. Okay, so once you've done that a few times, you start to feel that as the body rises, the knee rises, there's a lengthening on the diagonal. It's an internal length up to the shoulder. So again, you follow that movement and your arm can float. Exhale, draw back in. Let your body release. Now, if you're really listening, this becomes an expression of balance rather than control. Exhale, draw back in. So try that a couple more times. And of course, this is interesting because when you first start it, if your mind's awareness is not in the hand and the leg on the ground, and you're not listening internally, this kind of thing will be going on. You'll be all over the place trying to force a shape rather than relax your mind and listen to your natural expression of balance. So then yoga becomes an external framework giving you feedback of how, how your mind is not, uh, it's not present, it's not relaxed, it's not open, it's not smiling. So it's a very helpful um, external way of giving you this um, yeah, giving you this feedback of what balance is and what balance isn't. Okay, so we're going to do one classic yoga posture here. So we've done a lot of experimental warm-ups. Ease out your shoulders, draw your centre up and back. And this one is down dog. It's quite helpful to look at this because often you see yoga poses where there's a lot of strength here in the upper body and maybe people are encouraged to have straight legs, which throws their weight forward, and actually you've got a balance, it's totally out of balance. So, you want to bend your knees and listen to this inner support drawing into your spine. And then you can see that my arms are completely light, free. So this is where you start to have this feeling of more transparency in your body. And it might be that when you begin, your knees need to be really quite bent. But what we're looking for is a spine that's open and free. So this is the spine that you want to cultivate for a sitting practice. Relaxed, open, inwardly supported. And then bend your knees, look up. So you can take one big step forward or lots of small steps. And then exhale. Again, shake out your shoulders. Now to come up, soft knees. We like to rotate our inner thighs. And then breathing in, follow your centre forward and open up and exhale. And then lightly circle here. So I'm going to hand over to Hugh now, just with one last sort of comment about this, the sense of freedom. We like to do a lot of circling here, but a lot of yoga movement is really quite linear. And if it remains in its linearity, it loses its natural expression. And so for me, what's very important is the sense of discipline, and you get a disciplined structure with the linear movement. But it's not to be at the expense of the fluidity in the listening. So that's why we like to do a lot of this kind of movement, easing out the joints, relaxing tension. So, over to you, Hugh. Thank you for staying with me. Okay, so here's Hugh. Okay, well, thank you, Sarah. 
Okay, so one of the things that uh, we often look at uh, on a retreat with Valente is the different postures of meditation, standing, sitting, uh, lying down. Um, so, and what walking meditation. So one of the things we want to explore here is taking forward what Sarah was describing about a soft body and keeping it light, keeping it free, but allowing it to stand without tension. So one of the things we want to do is bring our attention into our feet, feel the feet on the floor, feel the sense of contact. So close your eyes for a moment and allow yourself to feel the earth itself. That supporting rebound coming from the earth, which keeps us in contact. And then I want you to relax the back of your knees. And I want you to gently rotate your inner thighs, just a little bit, just a soft rotation inward, just enough to take the tension out of your buttocks and the hips and allow there to feel a sense of space here. Then connect in to this center that we described earlier, but not with the gripping, just be aware. Relax your ribs, let the navel be spacious, let the solar plexus be spacious, the heart, and allow your body simply to stand. Now, gently smile and relax any tension inside your head around your brain. Softly close your eyes for a moment. And move this center of yours forward and back until you find a place where your lower back just expands and opens and frees up. And then keep your awareness behind the navel or in the perineum and allow your body to relax. And maybe you can feel that sense of support. And this is the starting place for all the standing sequence in the, in the yoga is to find this energetic support in a relaxed body. So now begin to move that center in a circle. And see if you can allow your heart to stay still and move the center all the way around. And maybe you find that there's some stiff parts of your body or clunky bits or straight lines and corners instead of circles. That doesn't matter. If you keep your mind soft and expansive, you can allow your body to move around <laughs> these feelings of obstruction and limitation in your body. And again, it's kind of like the way we work with the mind in the meditation. When there's a sense of obstruction in the mind, if we push against it or try to get rid of it, then we find that we create that additional tension in the mind and the distraction builds. So keep your mind soft, keep your mind open. And then come back. Okay. Now, we're going to keep your knees soft. Keep our hips free. And move the center into the spine. And let the body relax out. See how my spine is not bent. And gently move the center forward again. And back. Let the body relax here. Okay. So you're working from this place. Release the body. The body's free to move. And move the centre forward again. So we begin to feel the body is soft, light, and free. And then our lower back remains spacious here. So there's space here in the back. Good. And then we're going to come down. We're going to come down with tucking our chin in first. The chin comes in. So imagine your spine a bit like a bicycle chain. So you can imagine a bicycle chain going around the cog. As the head goes down, the bicycle chain is going over the top. And think of the links that go up rather than the ones that go down. And you feel your spine lengthening as you come down. And then you move your center forward and the body reverses. So everything is occurring because we're moving from our center. And we relax the body. Exhale and shake out from the center again. Now I'll go back again once more and allow the body to come down. And up. Yes. 
So we're not lifting our body. We're moving from the center and the body is moving to keep the sense of space in our lower back and spine and to keep us in balance and gently move the center of our body. And then we're going to move the center forward. As we move the center forward, if we don't release our body, we're going to feel ourselves falling forward. So now move the center forward and allow your body to begin to release and move the center back. Now, how soft can you keep your body? Keep the hips free, keep your knees free, keep your shoulders relaxed. As this center moves forward, the first part of the body to move is the head. Not because you're cranking it back, but the yeah, and practicing with us. I want you to right away. So now to draw the center forward, let the head release and come back. No strength. Now move forward a little bit more, and this time release the back of your heart. To the, to the ceiling and gently come back and back and now you want to work with releasing your shoulders so as you move the center forward keep your shoulders relaxed release the back of your heart work from this center going forward allow your body to be soft free keep your attention in your feet and gently bring So now, change to draw the core back and allow your body to come down as well. And pull away. Good. So now we're going to just move from the center and move one way and move the other. Make sure it's from the center. And then gently come back. And I want to compare that to the way we can sometimes move. So have your arms out, and this time think about how far around you can take your arms and come back. And how far around, come back. And allow yourself to notice the end point. And notice what's happening in your mind, in your body, and with your breath. So as you go around thinking about it, maybe you feel the spine goes tight and starts to push back. And you find yourself holding your breath. And you can feel your mind going tight. Now, come back to the center and move from this place. And what do you notice about the spine, your breath, and your mind? Keep your attention in your feet. So when you move from your center, from this energetic center, there's no pushback in the spine. When it hits the end of the edge of tension, the movement stops, but it doesn't, it's not abrupt, it's not tight. When you allow yourself to move from your energetic center, your breath stays natural and deep. And when you move from this energetic center, your mind remains soft and spacious. And that's the touchstones for the whole of the yoga practice. So, toes together for a moment. And we're going to move the right foot out. Have your right foot in line with the mat, back foot across the mat. Draw your center forward and allow your arms to come up. Now, move your center in a horizontal circle and let your knees release. Let your ankles release, let your hips release. Feel your spine releasing and your shoulders. And then move the core a little bit less and a little bit less until it's just kind of vibrating there. And then we're going to move this center towards the back edge of our mat and allow the body to come out. And notice how the body moves to keep the body in balance, not to make a shape. Doesn't matter how far you come down, but wherever you are, see if you can move the center in a circle and keep all of the joints relaxed. Your attention is in your back foot. That's the contact that gives us the support. And then turn, look at the front foot and move this center towards the front and the body comes up without you having to lift it. It's balanced. Come back, turn your feet the other way and try the other way. That allows to move. See that if you don't let the body move and you move this center, you feel the body go tense and then it releases into space. 
So all of the time, we're moving into space as we go round. Then you can move the center in the circle. The body is light, it's soft, it's open, it's expansive. There's no tension in our body. All of the joints are still free at the limit of our posture. And then turn and draw that center forward. And then have your feet parallel. And move the center in the circle. And notice if you keep your hips relaxed and your knees and your ankles, all of the joints are free. And then we're going to draw this center into our spine and allow the body to come down. So what's really important here is one of Bhante's key teachings, drops. B-R-O-P-S-S. Don't resist or push, soften and smile. So don't push through the sense of resistance you feel in the body. Okay. Keep the mind soft, keep smiling. And then when you're ready, minding your feet, move the centre forward and allow the body to relax off the floor. Exhale back. Good. And then come back to centre. You're going to have your attention down the left side of your body. And move the center in a circle and simply allow the right side to move to keep the body in balance. So you're not making a shape with this right leg, you're letting it move because your center is moving in a circle. And because your center is moving in a circle, the leg moves to keep the balance. So the body feels still, upright, and relaxed. And then work the other side. See if you can feel this in your body. Yeah. The foot doesn't have to come off the floor. It just depends how much you move your center and allow the body to relax. So when we're meditating, a thought comes into the mind. If we allow it simply to pass through, the, body, the mind stays still. Here, if we allow the body to move, to keep the balance, then the body stays still and stable. Excellent. So then, draw your center to the left and release your leg out to the right. Perhaps bring the foot up or against your thigh or on your foot, wherever feels comfortable. Gently rotate your inner thighs, allow this energetic center to be present. Draw the center forward and allow your body to be free. Now, try not to weld the joints. So if we move the core in a circle, we allow the hip to move and the knee to move to keep the body in balance. So we don't rock from side to side. Exhale down and work the other side. So all the time we're keeping this attention down the right hand side. Perhaps this side I'll do just on the foot, inhale. So we're here and move the core in a circle and you can see my knee is free to move. Is relaxed. Okay. And exhale and back down. Good. So, toes together. Inhale. Allow the body to release here to balance. Exhale. Draw your center back and relax your mind as you come down. Inhale. Look up. Transfer your attention to your hands. Exhale. Step back. Inhale onto your knees if you wish. Draw your core away. Let the heart open. Exhale. Inhale, and then we're going to tuck our toes under. Exhale, come up and back. Okay, so you saw with Sarah relaxing your hands off the floor here. It creates no tension in the shoulders because the support, the energetic support is coming from your core. Okay, so then we bend knees here. Listen to your hands. Now, we're going to move the core away from the spine and the heart comes forward and the core comes back and the body comes uh, keep the body soft. Keep looking forward. Now we're going to move the core away and relax the feet, maybe to our hands or maybe further, and others allow ourselves to come into a sitting posture. Okay, so we've just got a battery. Uh, Computer needs to have its battery put on. Excuse me a moment. Uh, 
Okay. So, allow the body to relax here. So you're going to have your knee sent up. And move the center in a circle. Okay. And as you move the center forward, allow your spine to release, shoulders relax. And then on the exhale, draw the center in and let the body release forward. Okay, it doesn't matter how far down you come. Move your center in a circle here and allow your body to relax. And then draw your center forward and let your body come up. Bring your feet perhaps closer together, but you can still have your knees bent. Draw your center in and let your body release forward. And then gently draw away. Good. And then place your hands behind you. Now, just be cautious here if you've got any back condition or shoulders. We want to work the core in a circle and let the shoulders release. There's no tension in the shoulders here. And let your hands come back. And then as you draw your center forward, you feel the body expanding here, but it's not a lift, okay? You're moving the center forward, the body's opening up and releasing. Okay, now try dropping the inner edge of your shoulder blades to relax around your heart. And then move the center forward. And as you move the center forward, the body expands off the floor rather than lift. Exhale and come back. Good. So, bend your right leg up. Okay. And draw your center forward so you feel the body long. And then, as you breathe out, allow the body to go round. So, you've got this gentle twist. But you're working from the center and your heart's open and your shoulders are released. And then inhale back to center and work the other side. And in, back to center, and then bend your knees again and draw your center in and allow your body to relax. And then draw your center away. Good. Bring your feet together so your knees are out to the side. Draw your center forward, allow your body to open up. And then you're gonna draw the center in and just let your body release towards your feet a little. And you'll notice almost immediately your body has become tight. So it's very common in this posture. Now, this is the edge of tension. If you try to pull yourself further down, you'll notice your mind goes tight, your body goes tight, your temperature in the body begins to rise and your breath loses its freedom. So back off from that edge a little until all of those things disappear. Now, rest on the edge of that tension. Relax the tension inside your head, softly smile. So this is using the six R's. And then soften around wherever you feel the tension in your body. Let that expand. And maybe the resistant quality of that tension changes, allowing the body to ease through, but not push. And then gently draw your center forward and allow your body to come back. Okay, so place your heels close to your buttons and lie down on your back. Arms up, shoulder blades relax. Have your attention in your feet. 
Softly rotate your inner thighs, this inward rotation, just enough to release the tension in your hips, open up your lower back. Now, be present with this energetic center, deep behind the navel or a little bit deeper down in the body around the perineum for men. And this is the origin of movement. So don't push with your feet, don't lift your body, but give permission for this energetic center to expand towards your ceiling and let the body follow. So the body is light, it's soft, it's open. And you can begin to move this core in a circle here and check out if your joints are free. And maybe they're not, in which case you might need to come down a little until you find that freedom. And allow your body to open up and release in this posture. So instead of being a posture of tension, you move the body into a position of expansion. And this can expand into, into further movement. So only if you're familiar with this, if you've done yoga before and you use it in your own practice, you can place your hands by your shoulders, elbows in. And the temptation here is to push through your hands and the shoulders. But we don't need any pushing here at all. All of the work is done from the center. We're going to expand this center up towards the ceiling, opening the lower back, not tensing it, so that as we allow that to happen, the body relaxes off the floor with a softness and a lightness. Exhale, come back. As soon as we feel we need to make the shape, the body becomes really heavy and tight. Bring your knees over your chest and gently move or around in a circle and back the other way. And then release your feet to the floor and you can keep your knees up if that's what's comfortable in your back or if you would prefer to expand your legs a little more and come down into relaxation here. Have your hands palm upwards, your shoulder blades relax. Softly smile. Now, even in this posture, which is the lowest posture in yoga, you can't roll out into another posture here. You still need to find the balance in your body and in your mind. So, come into your lower back. Does your lower back feel spacious, open, and soft? If it doesn't, then perhaps bring your knees up a little. And then you want to check into your mind. So release the tension around your brain. Softly smile. Come back to this energetic center. The energetic center is our object of attention throughout the practice. This is what we come back to. This, when the mind is released, can be fully expressed in the body. When our mind is off tense or on automatic pilot, we can't use the energetic center for support. We, the body has gone too tense. So come back and to this energetic center and explore whether this feels spacious, open, free. Create space around this energetic center in the body. Gently smile, relax the tension inside your head, around your brain. Allow your joints to relax, let your muscles soften. As you breathe in, relax the tension inside your head, around your brain, softly smile. As you breathe out, do the same. And now simply let go of your breath. Stay with the energetic awareness in your body. Allow the tension around your brain to soften, gently smile.
And whenever the spaciousness around this energetic center closes down or gets a little tight, again, relax the tension in your mind, softly smile, let it expand once more. Relax the tension inside your head, around your brain. Softly smile. Soften around any tension in your body. Be aware how your mind feels. Be aware how your body feels. Be aware of this energetic center within you. Take a deliberate breath in and out. Wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers and then gently draw your arms around your head and give yourself a mild stretch. Bring your knees up and place your feet on the floor. Gently bring your knees over your chest if it's comfortable to do so and slowly move your core around in a circle. And then gently rock from side to side and slowly roll over and gently sit up. Now, Find your energetic center once more. Allow us to move forward and back until you feel comfortable. And you might need to have your legs up like this if your hips feel a little stiff or your back is. And move the center forward and back until you feel your lower back open up and release. Now drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades. And feel how your spine lets go. Be aware of the space around your heart. Gently smile. Relax the tension inside your head around your body. Connect to your breath. And 
And then as you breathe in next time, perhaps say to yourself, may I be well. May I be joyful. May my mind be peaceful and calm. My heart open and accepting. And then as you breathe in a second time, may all of those I shared this evening with be well, be happy, be joyful. May their minds be peaceful and calm and their hearts open and accepting. And then as you breathe in a third time, may all sentient beings, may they be well, may they be joyful and happy. May their minds be peaceful and calm and their hearts open and accepting. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we're very happy to deal with any questions that you might have. Yeah, please ask questions if uh, anybody has questions. Well, I think it. I think it's a very good, very good example of using the twin in conjunction with the body, and it seems like everyone was working with it. I didn't see everyone, but uh, I think. You did a very, very good job of presenting this, and um, I'm interested. <laughs> I really am, you know. And so I think uh, this is a very worthwhile uh, joining together of using the steps in conjunction with the body center and the balance internally. Very good. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, for that, sister. Um, I, I feel it's a very, very helpful and supportive. Uh, approach not only for daily life but the practice that uh, Dante, uh, you know, spends so much time and effort uh, teaching. Um, and I think the more ways we can integrate that practice into other aspects, um, it, it just helps um, uh, uh, expand its, its obvious relevance to every aspect of our life. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Any other questions? Any questions? I have a question. Okay. Yes, please. Please yes. go ahead. I have a I have a question. How do you find your how do you find your energetic center? Ah <laughs> yes. Um this this is a very interesting one because the energetic center has a very interesting property. You benefit from it but you don't feel it. And that's a really strange um, uh, concept in the sense that we know when we feel strong because we have tension in our body, you know, and, and we feel this. But when we've actually got this energetic strength in us, the body's so relaxed that there's no obvious physical sensation of this. Um, and it's much easier when we teach this, it's much easier to teach it in pairs because the other person of the pair can feel this support very dramatically, but you don't. Um, perhaps um, if we've got time, would you like to just stand up? We'll just do it. Okay. I'm going to ask Sarah to just simply stand really softly, a bit like a jelly baby. So I'm going to push down on her shoulders and, and I can push her down. Okay. Now I'm going to ask her not to make any difference other than to bring her conscious awareness to the energetic center. Okay? Now, I cannot move her down. And yet, Sarah's body feels exactly the same as it was before. Soft, relaxed, open. Okay? So this, this basically is kind of balance, it's not in martial arts as well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It is taught in martial arts and advanced kicks and flying kicks and things like that. This is exactly the training and in sparring. It's why women can compete with men in Asia where I was in Taiwan. Yeah. 
It's true. It is. Um, it requires a development of mind to mm -hmm. access an energetic uh, awareness mm -hmm. in your body. So all the training that all of you are doing through TWIM is developing, developing the property of mind that will enable you to relax within your body because you have to be patient. It's a really different training from one of physical strength and you have to be quiet and allow this to allow basically it to come into your consciousness. This is part of all of us is part of, uh, of, of, um, of being human. And I suppose one of the, the things we, we, we often talk about as well is if ever you look at animals and animal movement, they move with power and grace. They are fluid, they are effortless in their movement. You see it, and I can see someone's got a cat there. Cats curling up to spring. You see everything gathering in. They're not gathering in their paws and their forearms. They're gathering in from here. So it's a whole body drawing in. And then the spring comes from here and out they come, super graceful. So animals do this effortlessly. It's just, we, we've all got a development of what sometimes we call first brain, rational mind, all this conceptual stuff. And that has clouded our capacity to simply be present with an energetic presence. So the training is to unpick all of that stuff <laughs> to come back to what is essential. And so it does take, it does take time. And although it's immediately there, so some people, when we teach them, boom, find it straight away. Some people, two years later, where is my energetic center? <laughs> It, 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 so we have to also be really, um, it's like, it's like the whole of the whole of the path and all of, of your, of your teaching, you, we have to be very, um, patient with it unfolding and not be in a hurry about things appearing. I, I think to, to pick up what Sarah's saying, um, I, I practiced, um, a, a very strength orientated yoga for nearly 20 years. And it was only when I had a, a back injury, not, not created by the yoga, but from, from an accident. Um, and I found I couldn't do my yoga from strength. But I did have a strong meditation practice and I did, and I was aware of these energetic centers because they were part of the yoga I was teaching, but they were taught physically and not energetically. And I found that if I worked with them energetically, I could move my body when it was injured but I couldn't move it physically. And that's where this practice started from about 12 years ago. And it was about the same time that I first started to work with Bhante. And, uh, and the two just came together mm. like this. Um, and in the 12 weeks it took me to re for my back to, to recover, I, I changed the way I taught. And everything is built from there. Yeah. Is it good? Anyone else have a question? Yeah? Okay, uh, so... Um, uh, can, I, uh, can I just ask another one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Uh, so, if, if, so if, you're, uh, if you feel abdominal breathing coming up, if you feel a deep breath coming from your abdomen, would that mean that you have found, uh, is, that, is that the centering? Is that something that would aid the centering? Um, the, the deep abdominal breathing, uh, what tends to happen when you're working, yeah. working energetically is that the area around the navel tends to be largely static. So what you develop in this, this form of yoga is diaphragmatic breathing. So the diaphragm drops, the ribs expand, you know, the diaphragmatic breathing, but not what we would call abdominal breathing, like right? where the abdomen's moving out and moving in uh, in a fairly you know, <coughs> defined way. So just by having our attention here, stops, this stays soft, it's not gripped, but it, it encourages this diaphragmatic breathing. And one of the things that's uh, um, uh, 
uh, very helpful around the diaphragmatic breathing is that it triggers uh, a relaxation response in the body as well. Uh, and that's because the vagus nerve goes through the diaphragm itself. Um, so that's a, a, another aspect of this, this uh, teaching or this, this approach is that we are working away from the sympathetic nervous system and, and encouraging the parasympathetic nervous system to come back in, uh, in, to, into play. So we get this balance in our autonomic nervous system. It's a combination. And Sarah was talking about the first brain. This is very much our logical, rational, reasoning brain, works with concepts and ideas. And quite a lot of yoga, as taught in the West, is often taught from that perspective. We're very shape-orientated. We're very structure-orientated, um, alignment-orientated, mm -hmm. so and very linear in our yoga. And this, this, this approach develops what we call the second brain, the brain of the felt experience. Um, and this is a mind that is soft. It's a, 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 it's a body that, that listens to the balance in the present moment. Um, it's, a, it's a freeing, it's a light uh, response. And you need, you need a balance between the two. It's not that you need an, you know, only second brain, because that would bring its own uh, uh, challenges but you need a balance between the first and the second brain. We need to come into balance. And a lot of Bhante and Sitsukhima's teaching is all about how do we cultivate balance? How do we bring that sense of equanimity into what we're doing? Well, you know, the equanimity comes from us leaving. <laughs> and what you said a while ago, we are so full of thoughts and papanchas, this always causes a tightness. Yeah. One time, mm -hmm, yeah, and one time I saw a, a deer who was running and jumped over a car. The car was driving and jumped right over the car and across the road. You know, someone told me something that the deer did not have joints the way we did. And the, the legs in a deer are muscularly structured without... Uh, the knee, you know, the middle of the leg coming together and the hip is not a ball joint. It's all muscular. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, so see, and the deer is not complex thinker. And I, <laughs> I wonder if it was as complex as we are, if it could have had the limberness of the muscles to have been able to jump. It was like really amazing. And it's a female, it was a doe, and she just soared over the car and the road to the other side, the other pasture. It was amazing. But my uncle and I talked about that, and I think it was because he wasn't a complex thinker. Yeah. And also, yeah, yeah. And, and oh. in our society, we want to make everything happen. It's a problem in the meditation. Those who are willing to step back and Experiment, investigate, explore what it's like for you not to be there and allow things to happen. They progress very quickly. But the and, people, and yeah. 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 But, but that, that's that's, that's something exactly. that's very similar in, yeah. in this. Yeah. If your, your mind definitely gets in the way of this yoga and you mm -hmm. notice it. And so when you allow the energetic to express itself, then we feel this support within the body in a way that doesn't have this uh, interference of this constant dialogue of trying to make a posture happen. Uh, and so the postures come out of the practice rather than being constructed by the practice. Exactly. So I, I really appreciate all of you being here. Does anyone else have a question before we go? Let me start with you, you. Can you mm. hear me? A little bit louder. How to get in touch with you, Hugh? How to get in touch with me? No, no you. you. With you. <laughs> Very good. The website address given at the, uh, in the announcement. And I will also, uh, when I upload the video, I will put the website address. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I, I can, uh, and also maybe, you uh, can we share your email? Yes, yes, that's no problem at all. Yeah. yeah, so then I can uh, share the email and it will be there with the YouTube, uh, which I'm up uploading when I upload it. 
and i can also mention it over here in the chat i'll just mention it so you can uh, take it from there also yeah, yeah if, for, if, if people would like yeah sorry if people would like to to um uh, uh, explore this practice a little more i mean we're based in the uk now although some of you i met when i was out in penang um, you know, we're happy to schedule a, a class that's a suitable time for, for your uh, uh, um, uh, uh, time periods. Um, so if that's of something of interest and you want to explore that, but then just, just let us know and we'll see if we can put something together. You know, I, I thought that the presentation was very good, you, but what I would like you to do is uh, if, if I, I send you a picture of what I took, because I, I think that if you took the camera about one foot closer and tilted down a little bit, you didn't need so much of the wall above you. And oh, you, were, you, guys are, you guys are very tiny, very small, yeah? I and think that the difficulty for us sometimes is the fact that, uh, you know, it's, it's having as much of our body inside when we're doing standing postures. That's, uh, yeah, but there was uh, the whole first presentation she did. I would have liked it much better if I could have seen her. Yeah. Ah, I okay. It was like very tiny, and maybe you could adjust it when you're doing the standing up part. But when uh, I look at you, like here, I don't need to see all the wall when she's doing sitting and moving and everything. But I really liked the place that you're doing it. It's a beautiful setup. You did a very good job. Mm. Phone okay. number is possible? The phone, phone number, number is, possible. is the phone number on the announcement, Dhamma Gavesi? No, phone numbers I have not given. Uh, I think uh, you can contact on email and then uh, get a number. All right, okay. So one-on-one okay. -on -one, uh, con uh, conversation if you want to have. All right. You, you do, okay. do you want to uh, share the number or uh, we can, uh, e they can email and then on, after on the email, you can share the number. Okay. okay. Yeah. Share, share the email now, Get, drop us a line if, if you want to and, uh, and that's... Okay. Uh, and uh, and do, do you have any written brochures on the uh, Sukita uh, Yoga? Um, we, well, our website has some limited information on mm -hmm. this. Uh, we're working yes. on it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we're, gotcha. we're in the process of rewriting, uh, rewriting the website. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining. And uh, I think as Dharma uh, Gavesi said at the start, um, you know, this, uh, the idea is a, a donation basis to, to help uh, uh, with Bhante's travel arrangements. So uh, please discuss with uh, Bhante Dhamma Gavesi, whatever, whatever that may be. So did it say on the announcement what they could do, where they should take, do, take care of that, Bhante? Uh, in the announcement, I have not put it. I, will, uh, I have already shared the links and uh, the details on, on the group. So everybody has the details. Okay. Okay. So have it. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Hugh, for uh, giving your time and uh, efforts, and uh, uh, we hope that uh, people benefit. And we'll also put this on uh, YouTube, and I'll also share the recording uh, link with you, so you can also, uh, in your own way, uh, put it across your Facebook or something like that, and uh, share mm -hmm. it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 lovely to have met you all. Yes. Yeah. Sadhu. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.